Hey guys, Clay Ramage here. Hey, I'm doing a voiceover on this because the music was really loud at the bins today. And uh, I'm happy to say the bins were back. They were much fuller. Had some great merchandise in here. Um, I was sorting through books. I found a pair of shoes for kids. Um, but yeah, there were a number of kids' books in this. This coloring book I thought about, but I'm trying to stay away from more modern things and looking, trying to pick up only vintage stuff. Um, so, I do occasionally still pick up things. Like, I picked up this Lego storage head, um, so you could store your Legos in here. But then I decided um, it was just too big and I didn't want to deal with it anymore. It wasn't broken, I just didn't latch the other side. That's why the lid came off. But, yeah, and I'm also trying to deal with smaller stuff because just for space, it's harder to sell those things. There's a needlepoint kit, which I threw in my cart because I do well with those. And they're easy listing, so they're great to have in your store. And going through, somebody got rid of their Mickey Mouse plush mm -hmm. collection. There were a number of them in this bin, and I only picked up one. I did look at the others, but I have a number of them now. And uh, they've not been selling. So, like, okay, I picked up one that I think will will do fairly well. And I just passed up those cups, but I go, whoa, what did I just miss? Because I found mini mounts. So many threw in the cart. And then I was looking through some of the other items. Found this bunny. He's a, actually a modern piece, but I thought he was really cute. It's a little bank. And I like digging through these bins with plushes. A lot of people just, you know, go right past them. But I like digging through them because I've, as you know, I found some plush worth some money. I found this brand new mat for framing. I use those when I'm framing different prints because a lot of frames are standard sizes. And I'm finding some more kids' books. Back at the beginning of this bin. Uh, move on to the next bin, kind of. Looking to see what's inside of here. It was this bear. It's really strange. I think it was supposed to be a bear with his hand in the honey jar kind of thing. It had a tag on it. It was like somebody made it. But it wasn't very good, so I kind of just left it. And then in this bin was over full in the sense that it was piled high and deep. And I like these kind of bins because people don't um, tend to dig down to the bottom. And that's where I find a lot of things because they just skim over the top. They don't want to take the extra time to dig underneath the piles. Uh, in this case, it wasn't too much under all of this stuff. But you never know what you're going to find up here, so that's why, to me, it's worth the effort to dig through it. See, like, I found these, um, and I'll go over these at, at, in the haul video. These are actually British Airways salt and pepper shakers from the uh, airline. And airline stuff has a following, and there were a good number of them in there. And I looked, I wanted ones with the stoppers in the bottom, so... That's what I was focusing on when I was looking at these, was the, to see if they had stoppers on the bottom. And you'll see the big mistake I made when I do the haul video <laughs> by being distracted by only concerning myself with one thing about them. But, um, but yeah, anyway, this was an empty Norelco case. Sometimes these vintage shavers can do well. I've sold those in the past. Not very, very big money, but twelve to fifteen dollars. Uh, especially if they're in the original case and all the original accessories that are nice and clean. Don't recommend selling dirty ones. They don't sell. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, just a lot of hodgepodge today. It's good. I like hodgepodge. It doesn't have to be the same. And it's 
strange. Like some beans will be, some bins will be really full, and some will be kind of full. In this case, these were, and these were the older bins. These had been gone through once before, the day before. They don't change these out. So, whereas the there's two rows of household bins, and the other row is fresh. But, you can find, I find stuff in all of them, so it's not like there's one good or one bad. Some people go right to this row in the, when they open up, so it works for them. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Clay Ramage. This time I'm back again with a Goodwill Bins haul. <laughs> so yeah, so my prior video to this one was when I was coming back from the bins and ran into an estate sale, found some incredible finds there, so if you haven't checked it out, go ahead and Please check that out because that's I'm still amazed at what I got for ten dollars um, and so yeah so the bins cost me a little more than ten dollars today cost me thirty five dollars today but we found some good stuff so uh, um, kind of excited so we're just gonna hop right into this found some books on this Peter Rabbit book munch ah, I love it it's got all the pages die cut in different munch patterns that's a great little book it's a modern book but i have to try to get it's got a little sticker residue on the front get that off but and then oh this thing a piano buyer's guide um david s ray your piano consultant schmidt music which is a local music store uh oh, and the phone number this is great you can tell the age look at the phone number so this is probably 1954. I was going to say 1950s, sure enough. So, patient handiwork. Net profits on piano sales are low. 1958 cost of doing business survey made by the National Association of Music Merchants shows their average net operating profit before taxes to be 1.7% per dollar of sales. So they're making $1.70 per be um, $100 in sales. So yeah, uh, <laughs> this one I picked up. It's a children's book, The Haunted House, and Mickey Mouse, Disney. This I'll put out during Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Halloween. <laughs> Got a piece of tape on the front. I'll have to try to get that off. Um, and then another Pippi Goes On Board. This is a Scholastic book. I don't even know. Well, this one's from uh, 1960. Printed in the USA. So that's a fun little book. And then I picked up some piano music. Masters and Their Melodies. This is an old piano instruction booklet. These are all for my personal collection. This is a menagerie of different songs. Again, simple, early. Oh, I love this one I bought just for the, the cover artwork. Look at that. Technique Tales, book one, Oliver Ditson Company, 1936. Isn't that awesome? Oh, and then they got some great illustrations on the inside. Oh, they just did great graphics back in those days, in my opinion. And then there's just some more modern, a little more modern, not modern modern, but a little more modern than those. Uh, these are ones I grew, oh, Music Box Dancer, Sunrise, Sunset, ones I grew up with, found a Precious Moments Puzzle, and this is from 1972. Nice big. <laughs> okay, I guess I play. Uh, I guess I get to play sixty-piece pickup. <laughs> that was too funny. I don't know what I was thinking. Found some Easter stickers. There's some um, with bunnies, and then there's some with flowers. So that's fun with Easter coming up. Oh, and then I found this leather purse. 
tooled leather um, and it's actually in really good shape it's been used but the handle shows very little wear the interiors is extremely clean and it says on the inside it's the brand is leathers leathers and leather made in Paraguay so yeah kind of a fun little purse but I just like the the brown and the the blue combination on this I thought that was really well done not that I'm a purse guy but I just like the color combo <laughs> found this lipstick holder and I think these are for your mascara um yeah I just like that it was pretty ornate needs a good clean but that was kind of fun found this Italian artwork this is actually a modern piece it's a well you know what this is this is a combination okay so somebody took this piece which is a vintage piece glued it onto this frame which is a modern frame and you can see the glue where it's squeezed out and made this and I think it's actually quite attractive so but yeah you can see this is the vintage label made in Italy handmade in Italy so this was probably from the 70s and then they put it in a modern frame and I thought that was a good combination all right one of the first things I started finding was some fiesta wear found one little bowl this is the smaller bowl and these are these are modern ones but I do well at fiesta wear at the pink elephant so and then I got four of these little saucer plates in different colors. Love that green. And there's the pink saucer. And then I got one of the, and I got a puzzle piece, bigger plates. So that's fun. And we pay 49 cents each at our bins for those. So those will go down to the, um, I'll take them down to the pink elephant. I typically sell them for like $5 each. So I pay 50 cents. I sell them for five. That's 10 times my money, um, which is a great profit margin. So I'm good with that. I also picked up bubble wrap on the next bin. It was basically free. Then I picked up this Pyrex lid and glass Pyrex lids can be quite valuable. Now this one does have some scratching on the top and it looks like somebody, oh, yeah, somebody took some like scrubby to try to get a label or something off the top. But this particular lid sells for $10 plus shipping on eBay. There's none listed currently. There's four sold, none listed, even though it has a few scratches. And what's, what I find interesting is people are charging over $10 for shipping for this. And I'm like, I know it's glass but you don't have to, it, it's light enough, it could go first class and you can pack it in a way that it goes first class. So anyway, so yeah, that'll sell very quickly. Picked up this Mickey artwork, isn't he cute? Um, this is a modern piece, modern decorative piece. Oh, and stated they framed this in 1999, so, but yeah. I just thought it was cute. Good old Mickey playing golf. It's a good subject. Then there was a bin that was full of these. These door hangers, needle points. And I mean, there, there was one for every season, every occasion you can imagine. I only picked up three of them because most of them were quite dirty and well used. So I picked up the Christmas one, of course. I thought that would do well. I picked up the Easter one since that's coming up and I thought it was really cute and it was clean compared to the others. It does have some animal hair on it. Then I picked up the Halloween one because it was pretty clean too but it was up here that it was you know where people would grab the knob. That's where it was really dirty on most of them so that's why I passed on it but those three I thought number one they got a broad appeal and uh, they were fairly clean. I found this it had me intrigued. That's why I bought it. It's made in El Salvador. So it's probably a souvenir piece. 
a little dusty too. But I just liked it. It's very colorful. Great decoration. So, so I picked it up. Um, this is a needlepoint. It's a plastic canvas with the goose, geese, goose. Well, this says, oh, the needle is made in Japan. And this has 1990 gaggle of geese draft stop wall hanging. So you can make it as either as a draft stop along your door or hang it on the wall. So, again, these, I do fairly well with needlepoint kits. So that's why I pick them up when I see them at the bins, because I'm not paying very much for them. Found a mat, an 8x10, picture size, 11 by 14 frame size. Because I have lots of artwork I need to deal with. Easter, I found this cute little rubber bunny. He's a bank, he's got the slot, but there's no way to get the money out. Oh, it's a modern piece, but I just thought he was cute. So he'll go down to the pink elephant. Oh, speaking of Easter, found a whole bunch of Easter cookie cutters. There's a little bunny, a little chicky, eggs. I've never seen egg cookie cutters before. And then another funny number of them are duplicates, but. And then I, I <laughs> ran into a, a viewer while I was at the bins. And I'm sorry I didn't get your name. I'm, I can be bad about that sometimes. Anyway, but she found these for me, which I love these old fashioned car. These are the metal wall hangings. These are Midwest products from, I think these were probably come out in the seventies. These aren't dated, but. So these will go on my wall in the other room where I got, have a couple of them already. So thank you so much for giving these to me. And, uh, because I love old cars. And those are going to fall off of there. There. Okay. All right. A few more things. I, this is this is one of those things that I didn't know what it was. Saw the box. I'm like, oh, what a nice box. So I opened up the box. Still didn't know what it was. Opened up the box. Still didn't know what it was. And it came with that passport. I'm like, what in the world is this? Then it's that, still wasn't sure what it was other than it's discs. And then I started reading what it says on the thing. And what these are is these are language courses. And once I turned the spine, Spanish one and Spanish two. Um, 16 CDs, 30 lessons. And then I found the same company, but just loose in this case. This is quick and simple Spanish. So I picked these up. These actually sell really well. These are 15 to $20 each. So as a set, this is like $30. Um, and the more lessons you have, obviously the more they are. Um, but I want to check with my wife first because part of it was, I was, well, I was thinking of all right, we'll, we'll try them out and see, because I might keep them. Oh, it looks like we're missing a CD in this. I didn't even check. Lesson learned. Check to see if it's got all the CDs in this one. It's missing one in here, but that's okay. So there's good money in it, especially the ones in the boxes. I'll have to go through and verify, but it looks like they were never used, honestly. I found this canister. This is, says Coca-Cola on the top. It has no other marks on it. It is not, I mean, it's, it's a vintage item, but it's not antique. Oh, here it is. Okay. It's underneath the lid. I just found it. 1991 Coca-Cola. I just thought it had a great look to it. It's a reproduction of a vintage. All right. Now here's the story. I was sorting through the bins and I found some Tupperware lids. And then I found some canisters. I found these canisters without lids. And I knew these blue lids didn't match those, but I put them all in my cart and I said, I'll keep looking for the containers. Didn't find the lids. So I put these back. Once I got through my little rotation, I put them in a bin because I'm like, well, I didn't find the lids 
and there was a green set of canisters too. And I found two lids for the green canister, but none for the yellow. So then I decided to go back one more time through the bins. And when I go to the very first bin on my second round, what did I find? The three yellow lids. But then I had to be make a beeline to go back and get all of these three canisters. So yes, I found a set. Because I said, if, unless I find the lids for them, I'm not taking the set unless I find the lids. So I found all the lids for the yellow ones. But I still had these two yellow lids that I had found that I set with the yellow bins. Well, then I found the white base containers for those. And then I had to run over and get the blue lid. Now these aren't, and maybe you guys can help me. There is some staining in the bottom. And if you guys could help me know how to, if there's a way to get that staining out, I guess is what I'm asking. You know, put a little, fill it with water and put a little bleach in there with that do it or you know I know sometimes hydrogen hydrogen peroxide works on some things so anyway if you guys could give me your thoughts on a way to maybe get those stains out of it, that'd be great and then I found this vintage mini mouse and there was a somebody had a whole stuffed animal collection of Minnie and Mickey most of them I did not do anything with but I grabbed this one because she had a vintage tag. There's no date on it. But when I, and, and she's like a $10 mini, except every single one that's listed that I could find is with a red dress. None of them had blue. So I don't know if blue is more rare, but I thought when I list it, I'll put rare on <laughs> Rare blue dress because all of them had red. So I don't know what that all means. Oh, did I show you that I got the, yeah, I got the set of three yellows with the list after all my story. Um, so sometimes you just, and that's what's so weird is the lids are in one bin, the canisters, I don't know how they end up so far apart, but I found these three glasses too, which I thought were just awesome. Have a happy day. Aren't those great? There's no markings, I have no idea who made them but um i just thought they were awesome oh then found this it's a silver plate tie but it's actually a bottle opener and there's the other and it's a princess house so i'll polish this up and uh list this i have no idea if it's worth anything and you know i can list it at least for 10 bucks but i just thought that was really kind of fun then I found these two items. Oh, oh, that's what I get. Um, they're salt and pepper shakers from British Airways. But this one's I just noticed is cracked. And the sad part is there's a whole bunch of them. I only picked up two. I should have looked at them closer because I could have got one that wasn't cracked. But I wanted ones with stoppers. A lot of them didn't have stoppers, so I just grabbed two of the stoppers. Another lesson learned, but that's okay. I, it's only maybe 10 cents. So, but last thing, found this beautiful brass um, accessories tray. You know, set it on your dresser. It's solid brass, made in Taiwan. It's a duck. I just thought it was great. So, that'll go. I don't know. I'll look it up on eBay. I haven't looked up any of this stuff, so I don't know what it's worth, but I know I got my $35 back easily from this great haul. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you liked the shop along at the beginning. We'll catch you next time.